Good morning. Um, I'm going to do chapter 21, the New Deal. This will be a shorter version of my lectures. Um, I will be gone next week. Um, and so as I'm working on this, getting this, uh, this, this lecture series up, um, I may not go into as much detail. The one thing I will tell you is to read through the PowerPoints for the, the key points, uh, read the chapter, chapter 21 reaction quiz and quiz we posted. Um, um, so these next week and a half and stuff is going to be kind of self-paced um, and make sure you are um, following along for that. Second thing, if you have not gotten the Cold War book, um, I will get the information out here hopefully after I get this video recorded. Um, it is not a very expensive book if you don't have a copy of it already. Um, and I'll get all the information for that. There will be a week in April that you'll have. Uh, devoted to doing the assigned research paper for this semester, book study, book essay type thing. Uh, so bait, please do not forget that or neglect that and put that off. Okay, um, the New Deal, the focus questions there, um, basically all of this is going to revolve around what was like the 100 days, the initiatives of the New Deal, um, what pro main proponents of economic justice in the 30s and what did they advocate, what was the second New Deal, what was the new definition of American freedom combined with this New Deal? What were their benefits for minorities and women? And then how the popular culture influenced the, the, the 30s. So introduction. One of the, the products of the New Deal in the 1930s was the Grand Coulee Dam on the Columbia River. Um, from the economic standpoint, it was great. It brought lots of jobs, it brought power, um, a lot of economic um, creation. However, the, the negative of this was, at this time, was not a huge, was conservation. The salmon all disappeared in the area because they could not migrate up the river like they traditionally, and there was little concern during this period about this. Um, secondly, you have the transformation of the Democratic Party in the, the 1930s, um, um, and how they will take on a more defined role and really shift from their Civil War days mentality of things and um, really take on the, the, mantra, the mantra of the party of action and um, economic recovery. And then freedom went under a transformation, but not for all. But the definition of freedom, the roles government with freedom and stuff is going to really transform during this 1930s. Okay, the first New Deal. Um, FDR in the election of 1932. FDR was born um, in 1882, was a cousin of Theodore Roosevelt, um, um, served as Undersecretary of the Navy during World War I. Um, However, one of the major events in his life, besides being Secretary of the Navy or Under Secretary of the Navy, was he contracted polio in 1921. Lost use of his legs. This was mostly kept concealed and very rarely ever photographed or videoed. Um, he kept it very much um, under wraps. Uh, when he comes in and runs for president, he's going to offer what's called the New Deal. Very vague at the time, no one knew what it exactly meant, but it'll come to have more definition as the thing went on. Uh, biggest thing he, is, he said we need to try something um, if even it works or fails we need to get the country going he called for repeal of prohibition and criticized Hoover for excessive government spending ironically enough though he's going to outspend Hoover, Hoover by a lot um, America was ready for a change and they wanted new leadership and Hoover uh, lost uh, FDR will get uh, uh, easily get 57% of the popular vote and win the election pretty easily um, not to mention that people are ready to drink legally again I mean we can't forget the aspect of prohibition and coming to an end um, that will come. Now, the coming of the New Deal, though the New Deal was an alternative to socialism on the left, Nazism on the right, in action of unregulated capitalism, um, was starting to be defined on the, the extreme right. So, um, the New Deal was not a socialist stronghold. There was socialist tendencies in it, but it was kind of a mix of the free market combined with government help. Um, obviously, in the 1930s, you see the rise of Nazi Germany, and I don't need to go into detail on that. Not, not people to understand that the radicalization that happened there and fascism. Did not enter office with a blueprint on how to end the depression, and honestly, he will not end a depression. That will be World War II, and we'll get to that later. He relied heavily on his group of advisors and put a wide group under him to help him. Uh, Louis Brandeis offered advice from the bench um, and believed large firms needed to be managed and directed by the government, but not dismantled. So. Um, as the New Deal takes off, there's going to be a lot of things that, like, how do, what, how do we go forward? Um, so, next slide. First New Deal 2. 
the banking crisis. So one of the first things he tackled after election was the banking problems. Uh, it was on they were on the verge of collapse, so he declared a bank holiday. Though it was this legal, unconstitutional, we no one really knows. But he passes the Emergency Banking Act um, on March 9, 1933, provided funds to shore up threatened institutions, and basically closed all banks um, and ordered them closed until that they could get uh, things in place to keep them from permanently closing. Uh, the Glass-Steagall Act barred banks from becoming involved in buying and selling in stocks, this marginal betting that it had been problems of the 20s. They also established the FDIC to insure people's money, so if the bank closed, they would, the people would get their money, and this will help stop bank runs. FDI still is still around and very, very important. I think it's up to $100,000 typically per uh, customer. The NRA uh, will be created during this, not the National Rifles Association. That's not what it is. National Recovery Agency, I believe, um, or ACT. Um, National Recovery Administration. Uh, the first three months of the uh, FDRs it will be known as the 100 Days. Flurry of legislation started with the Emergency Banking Act, NRA, AAA, Triple C. Uh, these acronyms, these 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 programs, just trying to get the country going. Uh, the NRA. Um, was the centerpiece model in the government business partnership that was created at with the WBI War or WIB of World War One, the War Industrial Board. Um, this would work if groups of business leaders establish industrial code standards and get prices and stuff going again. Uh, mired in controversies, as large companies dominated the code writing, so the NRA, um, though the intent was good, it was misguided at times because these companies ultimately acted on their own behalf. First New Deal 3, next slide. Government jobs. Congress did pass direct aid to local agencies to help the impoverished. FDR preferred temporary jobs versus uh, permanent jobs. Obviously, today, as we see a government shutdown, um, government interaction, government jobs, the dependence on the government is probably a little bit too much, but the idea here was to get people back to work. This is where it really, really starts, is in the 30s. Uh, the Triple C Civilian Conservation Corps took men to the forest to build trails, build various parts of national parks flood control, uh, wildlife preservations, etc. This job actually I'd have loved to have done. Um, working in the parks, working in nature, a pretty popular and very effective organization. Public Works Project, PWA, uh, build roads, schools, hospitals, other public facilities that were needed across the country. CWA, Civil Works Administration, launched in 34 built tunnels, highways, courthouses, and airports. Um, the CWA will actually be dissolved because costs are going to skyrocket. If you've not fallen in their courthouses, highways, airports, Especially airports today. If you haven't been following anything going on in Kansas City with MCI or the new KCI, as it's going to be called, uh, prices can soar out of control. So the CWA had no budget control, it, so it will be dissolved because of excessive spending. TVA, the Tennessee, uh, Tennessee Valley Authority, flood control and power along the Tennessee River still exists to this day. They built a huge network across multiple states along the Tennessee River to uh, facilitate power and also job economic growth at the point and it became a very uh, awesome event. Um, this corporation still exists to this day and operates um, in that area, providing power to people that never had power before. The New Deal in Agriculture, the AAA, uh, set production quotas for major crops and paid farmers to basically plant less. I'm going to pay you not to plant soybeans this year or have cattle or have hogs. This was an attempt to help raise farm prices. Uh, in fact, at one point, this government will buy and slaughter six million hogs. Um, that's a lot of bacon, uh, just to help promote better prices. Helped raise prices and proper owning farmers. Uh, policy uh, laying land owning farmers not to grow crops encouraged the eviction of thousands of poor tenants. So there was some negative to this that um, poor tenant farmers, poor farmers are going to suffer greatly for, from this. Obviously, the desperate problems with the drought. I mean, you can't fix a drought when a drought's going on. So, I mean, the New Deal in agriculture is going to be slower. There'll be some recovery, but it's going to not be very easy or effective. The first deal, deal four. The New Deal in housing, uh, FHA, Federal Housing Administration, insured millions of long-term mortgages issued by private banks. Um, that's an important deal. 21st Amendment will be passed. Prohibition will end. Yay, we can drink legally again. I mean, there's going to be rounds of happiness across the country. A series of experiments with the New Deal and still unemployment remained over 20%, though. So at the end of the couple years of the New Deal, by 34, 35, unemployment was still hovering around 20%. Um, not down, I mean, down, but it's not like, oh, we're back to, you know, 10, 15%, back to realistic areas. We're still high. The court in the New Deal, the court controlled by conservative Republicans, opposed many of the, the New Deals and struck them down as illegal. Uh, one 
particular case called the sick chicken case stated the legislative powers could not be delegated to the president and this where they argued was the president in one particular legislative act had actually acted as the legislative branch and thus they deemed this illegal and unconstitutional and struck back uh, which will anger uh, Roosevelt and will lead us into something we'll talk later about the court packing the grass grassroots revolt one labor great unable mass mobilization of workers uh, Immigrant children were not the were now the workers. Um, government, it appeared, was finally on the side of the workers. Um, so uh, there's going to be a lot of upheaval here and rise of some unions. The AFL, American Federation of Labor, refused to let industrial unions organize in '35, but new labor organization called the Congress of uh, Industrial Organizations emerged. Biggest one in the late '30s that will get a lot of support is the UAW. Or the United Auto Workers, they're going to have a sit-down strike because someone got, I think, fired. Um, they're going to sit down on the job. Uh, there'll be a little violence at one of the plants across the country, but generally, General Motors uh, agreed to negotiate. Um, and what you're going to see is now businesses are willing to negotiate with the unions. U.S. Steel reorganized the Steel Workers Organizi Organizing Committee. Um, and you're going to see some progress here of workers and the businesses working out some problems. And this is where you're also going to see the uh, binding arbitration or an arbit arbiter come in and, and um, basically negotiate a deal. Uh, labor and politics CIO, CIO put forward an ambitious program for federal actions shielding Americans from economic and social insecurity, including housing, health care, and unemployment and old age insurance. But there's still this, during this, the, this depression, the imbalance of wealth uh, became a, it was still an issue. New dealers accepted the under uh, consumptionist and explanation of the depression, and, and there was a lack of sufficient consumer demand. So, though, where programs are put in place to help safeguard against economic problems, we at the end of the day cannot force people uh, to buy things. So, economic spurring is going to not be mo going. And you were, you've heard of these old people. Um, not even old people, sometimes young people, but generally old people that bury their money in the ground. This is where this comes. No trust in banks, no trust in the government. They're going to keep it in the ground. They're going to hide it. And so sometimes you hear about like coins being found or hundreds of dollars being found, hidden. Um, and people don't spend their money. So the grass uh, roots revolt number two. Next slide. Voices of protest. Upton Sinclair ran for president or governor of California. Lost to one of the first negative campaigns in the history of the United States. It's super negative. Uh, he wanted to end poverty, wanted to use idle factories and land to put people to work. Um, but ultimately, that plan did not come to fruition. Huey Long, elected governor in 1928 of Louisiana, took the Senate seat in 1930, was very high, quick, and rising um, star in Louisiana. Controlled every branch of Louisiana government. He was a kingpin for that area, demigod. He used his dictatorial powers to build schools. Uh, roads, hospitals, and to increase the tax burden on Louisiana oil companies. He taxed the rich. Um, he had what was called Share Our Wealth Campaign movement, launched in 1934 by himself, Huey Long. Called for confiscation uh, of most of the wealth of the richest Americans in order to finance an immediate grant of $5,000 and a guaranteed job and annual income for all citizens. Pretty bold statement, Cotton, if I would say. Um, obviously, the New Deal is struggling. Um, and this, hey, this deal, this is well thought out, you know, $5,000, this is awesome, was on the verge of announcing a run for president, when shot, killed, assassinated by by a young son, not a song that the note says, but a son of a defeated political rival in 1935, and his plan pretty much dies with him, so Huey Long rises, and then quickly disappears when he is killed. Uh, Dr. Francis Townsend, a California physician, proposed an idea of giving a monthly payment of $200 to older Americans with the requirement they spend it each month. Yeah, they're not going to spend it. Um, but this plan will lay the foundation later for the concept that will be known as the Social Security Act. Okay, if you look here, there's photos of Dr. Townsend to the right, Huey Long to the top, and then FDR below um, in the bottom left corner. Um, many believe that Huey Long, if he had lived, could have potentially and probably would have beat FDR in 1936. Um, it's one of those what-if histories. And honestly, Huey Long is best comparable. It's Trump. His demeanor, his interactions. Uh, he was the Trump of uh, the 30s to some degree. Not quite a perfect example, but he definitely was um, 
shared some of those similar characteristics. Okay, the Grass Revolt number three. Religion on the radio, another critic of Roosevelt will be a Father Charles a Coughlin attacked Wall Street bankers and uh, greedy capitalists, called for government ownership of key industries. Uh, first, he was a supporter of FDR, but then he switched to attack them. However, he will support anti-Semitism and European fascism, and that will push him unfavorably into the mid to late 30s. Uh, but he is going to really um, attack and go after um, FDR. The second New Deal. So as the first New Deal is obviously struggling, having issues, uh, they're going to um, bring the second one. And the second one will be more about stability instead of promoting recovery. They're going to levy a high tax on large fortune companies and large fortunes. Uh, they will create REA, which benefits us in here in our county. Uh, bring power to homes across the country in rural communities. 80% of farms were still without electricity in 1934. And they wanted to promote electric households items as well, spurring economic excuse me, growth. Give them power, they'll buy electric items. The WP and the Wagner Act Workers Progress Administration hired some $3 million to construct public buildings, uh, 5,000 miles of roads, airports, etc. It built swimming pools. This is uh, obviously um, expensive. Uh, promoted the arts, public put artists, put public artists to work. A lot of their people didn't realize artists needed a job as well, and they would literally paint the buildings. Um, and there's a lot of beautiful murals throughout the country, including our area in this area. If you go and look in the, from the 30s of artists that were put to work on this, I think it was a federal program number one. Um, that's pretty awesome. Hired write, writers to produce local histories and guidebooks. You see a, a surge of local histories. Um, and also, audiences finally got to enjoy live musical and theater productions and new theaters that were built. So there's a lot of good things that happened with the WPA and the Wagner Act. Uh, the American Welfare State, Social Security will be passed with the Second New Deal in 1935, old age pension, still around today. Uh, this welfare state, we're not socialist, but we are providing coverages for people as they get older and a security net and blanket to help people. So the 1930s saw a change from whether the government should intervene to how they should intervene. So this is a dramatic shift. This is probably one of the most important concepts to remember from the 1930s. This, we go from a society that said, the, uh, what should the government help? Should they do anything? To how should they help? And when are they going to help? So that's a dramatic shift in thought that had never um, been around. A reckoning of liberty won. To many Americans, freedom was no longer there. FDR, to reassure Americans with these programs, whether they were successful or failing, went to the radio. And they're called fireside chats, like sitting with the grandfather at the fire, listening to his stories. He spoke directly to Americans about his goals, what was going on, and kept them informed. Uh, the election of 1936, central idea was the idea of freedom. Alfred Landon, the former Theodore Roosevelt progressive Republican from Kansas, ran. Um, and FDR's new coalition of Southern white, Northern black, Protestant farmers, urban Catholics, Jews, industrial workers, and middle-class homeowners helped him win in a landslide. Um, he really defined the Democratic Party, redefined the Democratic Party of the 30s, brought over a lot of moderate conservative Republicans to his side with his policies. Um, and obviously, you can see he had a, a huge audience of people that he was uh, winning over. Uh, next slide. If you look at this, 1936 election, yeah. Landon doesn't even know in his home state of Kansas. Uh, FDR loses Maine. We don't take Vermont. It's so only two states. Popular vote, 61% to about 36%. Electoral vote, um, 523 to 8. Um, I don't actually, I think Reagan has a bigger landslide victory in 84. Um, it's either Reagan or Nixon. But this is one of the biggest landslide victories in the history of the United States as far as electoral college is concerned and popular vote. Now, a reckoning of liberty to the court fight. Now, this is one of the big things that's going to hit um, FDR um, is his court packing scheme. Um, FDR was first president to take office also on January 20th with the 20th Amendment. Every year, president takes um, oath on January 20th. FDR attempted to appoint new members of the Supreme Court after a lot of the old Supreme Court uh, kept striking down his legal laws. Basically, he wanted to do two things. He wanted to increase the court to 15 judges. He wanted to make a mandatory age retirement of 70. What this would have done would have removed basically pretty much half the Supreme Court. So yeah, there's currently nine. It would have reduced it down by a few judges. Thus, his appointees, by moving it to 15, he would appoint well over 
uh, six to eight judges, thus shifting the balance on the court to his favor, and he would not have to deal with the court again. Congress will reject this concept they thought was an overreach of the executive branch. Uh, 1937, the Supreme Court did back down and did allow many of his bills to go forward without being rejected. So it does have the effect that the Supreme Court does back down, challenging FDR in a lot of aspects. But ultimately, this is a this is a a huge overreach by the president. It's a black eye for him. There's a very famous uh, cartoon um, picture, if you look out there, of him please, uh, being a baseball player, arguing with an ump, and the ump's the judge. Um, this is not a good moment for FDR. Now, the end of the second New Deal set the federal regulation on wages and work conditions. In 36, he reduced the federal funding for farm subsidies and WP work relief. And the economy slagged in 37. Unemployment rose from 14 back to 20%. Um, because of the budget was just so crazy high. Um, and this is where you can have the rise of John Maynard Keynes. Large scale spending was necessary in times of economic trouble. This Keynesian Keen Keen um, philosophy, basically deficit spending. Spending when, even though you don't have the money, keep spending to spur economic activity. And this will dominate American government philosophy moving forward because basically they said we can go into debt and we're never gonna have any issue. Which, that's not true, but. Uh, the limits of change one. Different groups of Americans experienced the New Deal radically different ways. The New Deal on American women brought more women to government ever before. Uh, Secretary of Labor, the first female to ever serve in the cabinet, Frances Perkins. Eleanor Roosevelt, one of the first female uh, or first first ladies that was very vocal, transformed the, the role of the first lady from obscurity to relevance. Organized feminism will disappear, though. So you do have women more in prominent roles, but after they got the right to vote, essentially they're going to disappear and dis uh, go back to doing motherly jobs, household jobs, and obscure, you know, like government jobs, secretary jobs, it's going to not be organized until the 60s. Uh, most New Deal programs did not exclude uh, exclude women from benefits. Um, CCC did restrict its camp to only men, though. Idea of male household heads dominated policies shaping men work, men provide, women will be there to support. Thus, female initially domestic workers were left out of Social Security, pensions, and unemployment insurance. Though this will be changed and is different today in the modern area, stay-at-home moms, people that work at home, those pensions, have there's, there's solutions to that, but initially they were not. The Southern vote saw, saw itself helped to mold an entitlement of white Americans. Long-standing Southern Democrats um, now were, were put into key leadership positions, um, and they're going to restrict uh, black Voters. Now, the Democratic Party is a whole unified, but there is still segments in the South and the North that do not see eye to eye in race or similar things. But to get some of these things done, they're going to work hand to hand and basically turn uh, the other direction. Now, the limits have changed too. The stigma of welfare, um, and, and going back to the African Americans, will be heavily restricted by these super racist uh, congressional leaders. Uh, when basically we're trying to spur the economy and stuff, they're going to be allowed to reign free and oppress the blacks, which often doesn't get talked about a lot. The stigma of welfare. Recipients came to bear the humility stigma of dependence on the government being on welfare. Handouts, as it's often called. States and local governments determine eligibility for Social Security and many other programs. This is the other part of that. So, local government, you are going to determine how this, this aid to people is given out. Guess where? In the South, guess who's going to get the least? African Americans. Who needs it probably the most? African Americans. And they're going to get the crumbs or what's left. Um, not very good. The Indian New Deal. Policy of forced assimilation will end for the Native Americans. They are actually now considered American citizens after 1924. Indians were allowed to govern themselves on their reservations, essentially. Uh, the New Deal and Mexican Americans. Uh, One-fifth will return to Mexico due to the plight. 200,000 children who were American citizens. Um are going to go with them. Worked in grim conditions in California, vegetables and fruit fields. Um, Mexican Americans at this point, it's not a rosy, great life. Limits of change three. Last hired, first hired. Or last hired, first fired. Uh, half of the families in Harlem received public assistance during the 30s. Shift in voting from the Lincoln Party, the Republican Party, to the Democratic Party. Occurs with the New Deal as the more economic aid is given out. Southern congressmen prevented passes of federal anti-lynching law in the 30s, and so there's going to be limits. Uh, but there's going to the biggest thing here is going to be a shift from Republican to Democrats. African Americans and droves are going to switch to FDR and the Democratic Party and stay there. 
Uh, federal discrimination, local officials put national housing policy into practice in a way that reinforced existing racial boundaries. Once again, anything these local agencies are going to use racial profile and racial segregation, et cetera, for funding, housing, et cetera. In the South, many construction New Deal projects refuse to hire black workers at all. So once again, African Americans are going to suffer greatly during this period. A new conception of America. Um, in the 1930s, did witness the absorption of other groups into the social mainstream. Catholics and Jews, ethnic pluralism will be more profound. Understand, though, Jews are still going to be, uh, there's going to be anti-Semitics out there. And obviously what's going on in Europe at this time is not well known. Um, but Catholics and Jews will have better standing in the United States. Acceleration of cultural assimilation due mostly to immigration will fall off. Immigration is going to go down. Uh, this is the heyday of American communism. Membership never reached over 100,000, but you're going to have people uh, that will join it. Some uh, gain gain some respect and they're with there with the unemployed. They're going to offer soup, food, and stuff. Popular front a period during the mid 30s when the Communist Party sought to ally itself with the socialists and New Dealers and movements for social change, urging them the reform of capitalists, and uh, rather than a revolution. They're, so they're, one thing that they're going to do that's going to help them is they're, in, they're not going to advocate revolution. They're going to say, well, we can do some reforms and uh, provide more aid. But uh, the reality is most people are still going to reject communism at, at its height or socialism, um, a better word for it. And um, many of them will go inquire about it and maybe sign up to go hear more information about it, get free food. You know, people go listen to people, and this is going to hurt people later on because when we get to the red, second Red Scare in the United States, people that just were hungry, looking for opportunities and stuff, maybe listen to someone, uh, just because they sent a piece of paper or attended to some meeting, um, they're going to get blackballed, and we'll get to that later. Redefining the people, American way of life uh, meant unionism and social citizenship, not the umbrella pursuit of wealth. During the 30s, artists and writers who strove to create socially meaningful works eagerly took up the task of depicting um, basically ordinary people's lives. Okay, new concept of America too. Challenging the color line. The Scottsboro case, Communist Party helped make the case for 90 of nine black men who were accused of rape of two women in international news. Though, I think they ended up losing the court case. It, this was a huge black eye in the United States. Whoa, what's going on here? Um, though racism did obviously go around the world, um, the United States was an exception of the, the degree of ha racism we have. House of Un-American Activities Committee will be established uh, to investigate disloyalty to the government, and this, it's called the HUAC Committee, uh, no longer exists. It will have a big impact in the 1940s, and we'll get to that later. But it will be created during the 30s to look for disloyalty against the government, against the people. By 1938, the end of the New Deal, uh, findings found that the South was way behind, not surprisingly. Uh, white elites benefited from these programs, but poor people, poor whites, poor African Americans, they were often never allowed, debunked, or isolated uh, from the funding from any programs and such. FDR tried to change the region's vote, voters, but he got rebuked by his own party. There will be stalemates in Congress. Obviously, uh, those that are in power and charge are going to negatively react and they're going to make life difficult for FDR. Thus, some of these policies will still be in place. Focus shifted to the events around the world. So by the late 1930s, um, though the New Deal has been marginally successful, and I mean, you're looking at unemployment has went down, but it's still high. Um, the economy is not growing at a high rate. Events in Europe events in the Pacific are going to start to catch your eyes and that's where we're going to start to see shifts in perspective. So, the New Deal in American history, in many ways it was very limited success. It greatly expanded the role of the government. One thing it does do is the government now is involved in the economy and everyday lives more so than they ever were. It did reforce, restore faith in democracy and redrew the politics of America that the government should and has the ability to do something. And remember, the key thing is whether the government should do something to now how they going to do something occurred and so people now expect the government to inter intervene did not end the Great Depression and I want to understand that people often think the New Deal was this grandiose event that saved the country the reality is it helped was a band-aid but ultimately what's going to end the Great Depression is World War II the economic growth the rapid transformation of the country technology socially, socially and everything World War II and its grand grand scheme is going to save the country. Okay, this is the end of lecture six. Uh, I did a 30-minute lecture of the whole um, chapter. Uh, 
I'm sorry if I missed some things. The detail. Make sure you read the chapter, read through the uh, PowerPoint, and make sure you, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.